Hello everyone. Today is um Thursday, June 13th, 2024 at 9:58 a.m. in the morning. Well, oh man. So this is what happened last night. Um oh man. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Last night was the fourth night of me being on the streets, fourth night in a row from, you know, when I was, when I had the hotel room for like, I think six nights. And so, cert, I mean, I'm wrongfully, you know, permanently banned forever from all Wyndham hotels because the online stalkers, you know, they called up. They waited until the week of court, which was last week. They waited until that Monday to call up all. They called up the Wyndham hotels. I mean, called up La Quinta hotels and showed them old, like five month old videos. And then, <coughs> excuse me. After that, um. So now I'm wrongfully banned from all La Quinta hotels. In all Wyndham hotels. And I was a Diamond member. And um, I had like 11,000 something points. If I would have got four more thousand. um, I could have had enough for a free night. So. Can't go to any more like Wyndham hotels. But. Then. Um. So, the, um, the Wyndham and corporate office, I guess, or customer service was supposed to get back to talk to me, but they never did. They made false promises with that to contact me within a week and they never did. So, like... It's seeming like the most I can talk to is customer service, but I can't find any information on, like, the top cust corporate. I mean, but I guess they probably blocking me from going to the higher-ups or contacting, like, a corporate office due to the gang stalking, you know. So, I, um... Last night, like certain hotels, I called around um, because I didn't want to go all the way across the river or go all the way to like Metairie or Kenner or somewhere and then find out that um I made a blank trip or a blank Uber ride trip because the buses weren't running really. Um Excuse me, and I can't go out in the east because of how dangerous it is. So I figured that well, if if I were to um get a hotel room, now the hotel rooms are seeing like, you know, like certain hotels I called up if they weren't booked already, all booked up. Like one hotel that I recently stayed at. Um, the website said 95% of rooms are booked, <clears throat> excuse me, but then I called the hotel and the agent said there was no rooms available at all. But when I talked to one of the corporate agents like a few weeks ago about another hotel, you know, doing that to me. And, um, you know, she confronted the the front desk agent about, like, if you got 11 or 12 rooms available, why are you lying and saying that there are no rooms? If, if you got only 75% of rooms booked, how do I call and you say that there are no rooms available? And that might be part of the gang stalking, too. 
and that's like what they they have done that to me with homeless shelters lying and say that there are no no space available at, at, at homeless shelters and they don't want me there and i could be new and y'all never heard from me before in, in a different city and state like what happened in cincinnati ohio and greenville south carolina you know they lied and said there was no shelter beds available and then in Greenville, South Carolina, once I get in, inside the shelter, oh, they started the, they started preparing the perp activity and perp me out of there and wrongfully banned me. You know, so like. I tried to stick it out last night. I mean, because I got like, a, you know, some help last night. And I tried to um, stick it out last night on the streets. But that man, you know, was getting scarier and scarier last night. And I was hoping he wouldn't come inch his way towards me. Now, the night before, I showed y'all the video about, I mean, the cops weren't even fucking running. They were not even running or did they didn't even look like they were in distress. You know, that man casually came like I, I heard I heard sirens a little too close. And then the officer came by. I only got the I didn't realize I only got the last minute or last second footage of them. And then they, they you know, they delayed my phone camera, slowed my phone camera, and I was hoping to get all his words on camera, but it seemed like the camera just captured for me to for him to, for me to just hear him say water, and so I repeated his exact question back to him. You know, and um, so the the perp that was harassing me a few hours before that had a song playing called "Suicidal." And that was on Memorial Day, and I got footage of that. And this guy, he perps with red and drinks red um, Budweiser. Now, it dawned on me the night before last, after the incident, that um, one time I was in the hotel with my work money, I think, in downtown Pensacola, um, and I was trying to get lower-cost hotels. But either they were all booked or whatever the case was. But I ended up in a three-star hotel downtown. But keep in mind, I had a job then, working at Seville Quarter. And I was really sick. And I thought they had, like, hurricane threats or something like that, too. And um, I was really sick. And the manager threatened to... um wrongfully fire me and say oh, i'm gonna say you abandoned the job i'm like but i'm sick not feeling well not just not feeling well but i don't know what infection or sickness i could have had you know that I, it was bad enough that i couldn't even go to work so then but anyway um it was somewhere in june two years no Three years ago, three years ago, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I had, um, like, they had, like, like, they had, like, snacks and all the free beer or whatever you could get, you know, so, out of curiosity, it's been, like, I don't even drink alcohol, I don't, you know, in the mentally slow, crazy biological family, they drink, but they think they got the fake authority to tell me I'm forbidden and not allowed to drink any alcohol. But they let the biological brother Sean drink alcohol. And the fake foster mom, Adrian Felder, I was of legal age to drink alcohol, 21 years old, and she said, You can't drink! Urgh. You know, but she used to drink a lot, you know, 
So the foster dad Al, when he was alive, he used to um feed us, you know, beer and whiskey or whatever, like Jack Daniels whiskey or whatever. Maybe we used to ask for some when we were little, like five years old or something. But I forgot, you know, what alcoholic drinks taste like. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um you know it's like even Mark would try to he would drink excuse me, drink and drive, you know, and, and have alcohol in his system and then tell me make it like he didn't trust me to drive or didn't want me driving. You know, they they don't want me to do adult things. So they had like whatever free beer, but out of curiosity, I haven't had anything like, I mean, the foster dad Al, you know, gave us beer or whatever as a kid, like, to, I guess a sample, but we were kids, you know, but three years ago, if I'm 40 years old right now, I was 37 going on 38 and I did a video like drinking the I mean, not drinking, but just taste testing, you know, what Budweiser beer tasted like. And I was like, gross, you know, but I did a, a video on it and the fake Darnell Williams perp stalking all my videos and stuff, even from videos from years ago. Um, he had, um, took a screenshot of that video uh, of a picture of me, you know, putting the beer to my mouth and, and trying to sample and drink. And you could see that I was like, you know, thought it was nasty or whatever. And, um, and so he would make fake Twitter and YouTube accounts using that picture, <clears throat> excuse me, using that picture to, um, you know, make it like it's, Oh, Candy's committing a crime drinking or something like that. Oh, oh I, I want I guess he wants to give people the false impression that, oh look, see Candy is not innocent. Anything to put you in a bad light. But all I took was one little sip. A sip of doggone beer. And so that perp that been, you know using the noise campaign, the ghetto noise campaigns to harass me with the loud music and stuff. He, um, you know, I, I, I don't even know. Just like what the perps did me with the red velvet cake. Now, every time I see this perp is beer, that same kind of Budweiser beer. And it took me a while to connect dots that now he's trying to condition me with the, um, the Budweiser beer. So like that perp with the loud music and then those five boys and then um, the situation that happened with the Oasis Motel and probably the Richard Terrell situation with downtown Pensacola. I think that the fake Darnell Williams perp or somebody associated um, you know are connected with them. So like the online stalkers are connected with the in-person stalkers. Because it, it seems like the online stalkers fraudulently and illegally find out my whereabouts. And last night I did a video showing the drone being directly on top of me. And they had another one a little bit further. Um, it was it was higher in the air and much smaller, but I know damn sure it wasn't any of the natural stars in the sky. And then, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, so like with those boys, how did they know to perp? What it was different kinds of cake. Red velvet was not the only one. And he had chocolate. They had chocolate, but they were eating cake. Because I mentioned a, a, a fake religious narcissistic perp harassing me about cake earlier that day. 
chocolate cake, not no damn red velvet cake. But then later on, when they were purping me with the cake and they had the one headlight and it's like, those five boys must have been shown my videos earlier that day or something. But the way they hurry up and, <clears throat> excuse me, try to race me to where, what, what was my sleep spot. And then they wrong, got me, called the police to wrongfully trespass and ban me from the area by the Gretna Ferry. Like, I was, as I said, I was trying to save some of my battery and all that. But I wish I would have had every, everything recorded. And those boys went to run. They had one headlight. I mean, I'm sorry, not one headlight. I think they had strange or one tail light, one brake light or something like that. I think they had one brake light. And then um, they tried to race me and hurry up and ran and were laughing. And then they, um, they it seemed like they hurry up and rushed. And wanted to be be seen eating cake in front of me, and I called and I got I mean I called them out on it, and they bullied, harassed, and laughed at me, and threatened and lectured me, and tried to tell me off about myself, and was being extremely disrespectful and acting effeminate, and everything like that. And it seemed like they were ran to rush over there just to eat cake and thought the shit was funny. And then they even called, falsely accused me of being a Karen in that video. And then the perp that's recently been harassing me, um, he even tried to call me a Karen. But that old, you know, freaking, I, I mean, that guy, um, that perp, he that was terrorizing me the other night, like my first encounter with him. Um, I don't think it was March, but it was, you know what? I think it was, I don't even think it was April. I think it was May. Um, and he called me a Karen. Now like, Oh, if you're 43 years old, you're almost as young as me. Um, well, that explains that, I mean, because I, I thought the motherfucker was like in his, in his 60s, or late 50s, early 60s, late 50s or early 60s or something like that. I didn't know how old he was. He looked old, rough and raggedy. But I don't know, it seemed like he had no gray hairs or anything like that. I, that didn't dawn on me, but he looked so old in the face. Excuse me. So, yeah, last night, um, that guy was fussing and cursing with the air and getting scarier and scarier. And I don't know if that was gang stalking street theater. I don't know if it was gang stalking street theater or if it was, um, I don't think he was targeted. But I heard if, if you see people arguing and fussing with the air like that, they might be targeted and getting V2K, voice to skull. But, um, and don't realize the targeting program, and, and that's why they argue back with or fight back with the voices. Now, Mark, um, you know, Mark was the first person, like, in 2011, I was, like, in 2007, Mark, I, I never went through that with Mark, but when I stayed by Mark in 2011, Mark was fussing and cursing with the air. In, in, in that apartment in Carrollton, Texas, when it was right before the situation went with me being raped by that Gio, that perp Giovanni, that na abusive narcissistic perp Giovanni. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So Mark was fussing and cursing with the air. And um, 
and he mentioned something about the government. And I'm like, what is going on? I told my twin sister about it. And she ignorantly laughed and talked about, Mark's schizophrenic, Mark's schizophrenic. <laughs> Mark's schizophrenic, Mark's schizophrenic. So, now, I never heard it. Maybe I haven't been around Yvonne, drunk lady Yvonne, the biological aunt Yvonne, long enough. But the biological brother, Sean, <clears throat> I mean the other brother, Sean, um, he said, Carter, you know, Yvonne talks to herself, right? And then I heard other family members say, too, oh, Yvonne, she talks to herself. <coughs> Excuse me. So, then, um, and, um, so, yeah, like schizophrenia and bipolar and all that, that's, that's a cover-up for either so-called demonic possession or government experimentation and mind control. That MK Ultra. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I've even heard, like, and, and it's like a lot of people who go through this, who, who I've experienced, every person I've seen do that was homeless except for Mark. And then they had a lady in da downtown Dallas, Texas, um, in 2011. She was fussing and cursing and swinging fists up in the air. And then they used to have um, people in Los Angeles at Separation Torture Mission that they falsely called Union Rescue Mission. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and that shelter, you know... They had, you know, they have certain people who have conversations with themselves or arguments with themselves or like arguing and fussing, um, you know, with nothing, you know, fussing and cursing with the air and everything. And um, so... But... Like, I would do my videos, like, the one of the videos that I just uploaded this morning, but I did it last night, um, walking towards the homeless sleep spot. And, you know, I was talking, addressing my supportive subscribers, but online stalkers, perps, you know, falsely accused me of walking down the street talking to myself. No, I'm addressing my supportive subscribers in the video. Not, I'm not talking to myself. I'm talking to my supportive subscribers in the video. The same way I'm talking to y'all now. I'm not talking to you perps. Fuck y'all. So, <coughs> excuse me. Let me see. I got to watch the time. So, after that man creeped me out last night and started to get more aggressive and more scary, um, it was like, I, I was, I felt scared. And so, you know, I was going to stick it out on the streets for another night and hopefully get like two cheaper nights for like tonight and tomorrow but um they had certain hotel rooms that would be like 88 dollars a night i call up the hotel they say oh it's a 250 fifty dollar deposit I'm like what like damn and they're like, oh but you'll get it back i'm like i don't have doggone 250 dollars for a deposit on top of 88 dollars like Oh man, even for like a debit card, not dog on, not in the credit card, but debit card. So, no way in hell could I afford or get um, hotel rooms where they have two hundred fifty dollar deposit. I try to get hotel rooms with no deposit, and that La Quinta that I was wrongfully banned from had 
they I heard that they started a couple of months ago with fifty dollar deposit. And those raggedy, rough, dirty hotel rooms, um, you know, some people compare it to a trap house in a sketchy area and all that. And then the La, La Quinta on Williams Boulevard in Kenner, they said that that hotel started charging $250 for incidentals for deposit. So even if I wasn't banned, I couldn't go back there anyway if they're doing shit like that in the hotel room. You can't even get fucking internet up in there. And the breakfast is, the breakfast attendants need to get fired. They they don't even do their damn job the way they're supposed to. And, and you will see the reviews where people were saying that um four slices of bacon sent out every two hours and then people have to wrestle over the dog on bacon shit like that you know and they don't even keep on top of ev having everything stopped both of the ladies that work there you know and then the one who i had the altercation with having like the um eternally angry attitude like she like she hates being there like she hates her job or, or mad with the world or something like that and i'm wrongfully banned from all Wyndham hotels because of the situation with her. So I can't even get any closure or get anything straightened out. But they can call me disrespectful. But if for me to say you're bullying me or you're a bully, oh, stop calling people names. Stop calling people out their names. And that's the sight games that they play. And gaslighting. So. <coughs> excuse me. So I can't go to La Quinta Hotels no more. The online stalkers. You know. Um, I showed y'all the day before yesterday, or was it earlier yesterday, the fake Darnell Williams perp. I put in a community post on YouTube where he said, um, you know, switch sides now, we own you. But it, it seems like they're doing stuff on purpose that if I knew them in person, um, they would have, if they would have, if they would have, um, they would do stuff on purpose that if I knew them in person, that, that you know, that they would have triggered me to and provoke me to, to violence and reactive abuse. And then they would have cried and pretended to be fake victim. But any like just like y'all tell me, oh, Candy going to fuck with the wrong one and get hurt. How is standing up to being harassed? How is that fucking with fucking with the wrong one? Or they will tell me Candy is gonna one day fuck around and find out. Or Candy would, deserves to be hurt. No, it's y'all. But y'all say gang stalkers won't put their fingers on us. They won't put their hands on us. Or that they won't kill us. And they're vibrating my body right now. Like last night I had just got up in this room and my body was being vibrated. <coughs> Excuse me. So. I mean. If I would have got like. If I would have had to travel to across the river or to Metairie. Um, I would have had, probably had to pay at least between twenty and thirty dollars Uber ride on top of maybe eighty dollars or something like that for a hotel night. So I figure I might as well come somewhere. I mean, I might as well go somewhere, you know, walking distance. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, on my way to the hotel, they had, you know, people who were rude and refused to help me with um directions on how to get here you know and um 
and then when I I came up in here, um, they had two guests that were sitting down eating, and they were rude and unhelpful when I was trying to figure out where did the front desk agent go. So, I um finally got in the room. It was almost midnight when I got in the room, and I and it's like because that that guy last night made me feel unsafe and uncomfortable. Um, he probably would have been no bother. He probably what could have been no somebody that's not a bother, but you know. <clears throat> Excuse me. He was going off and being super loud and everything. And then I just freaking had it. But every night, there's something, something crazy going on every night. Or you know, they sending perps to um surround me, and harass me or make me feel unsafe and uncomfortable. And I don't have any other homeless sleep spot, nowhere to go. Excuse me. So, and my legs were swollen. Um. So I like this hotel. I've seen the price be as high as like two hundred fifty three dollars. But last night I got lucky, I guess, and it was like. One hundred one dollars plus tax, and then it was like one hundred eighteen dollars, and then I had to pay one hundred dollars for a deposit or incidentals or whatever. And I'm like, damn. But a lot of hotels in Pensacola, I had to pay on um, incidentals and deposit and stuff. But usually it would be like mostly most of the time one hundred dollars or sometimes fifty dollars or something. Oh man, cause I I got the help later last night, and I, as I said, I was gonna hold out until tonight and get two nights in a hotel where I don't have to worry about um deposit. So I came here last night. And I um took a shower and then um it was almost one o'clock by the time I got out of the shower and one o'clock in the morning, I dozed off and went to sleep and had to use the bathroom like four times in the middle of the night. And then I woke up, it was nine ten. I'm like, whoa, did I miss breakfast? But I guess that sleep was much needed. You know, um, but but like the La Quinta Inn, I mean, or whatever hotels, um, if they would be as cheap as fifty five dollars a night, um. With the points and stuff, if it'd be fifty five dollars a night at La Quinta, um, but I've seen th those same hotels as high as for whatever night, one hundred twenty seven dollars. But if I would have had points with this hotel, like enough points, I probably could have got free or discounted nights, but. I don't have enough points for um free or discounted nights. So I had to pay everything in well, the member price, but pay everything in full, you know. But I wish that they had I wish that they had it to where if you were like a diamond member that you don't have to pay deposit, but no, I still had to pay deposit. So I have to check out of here because I don't have enough money to stay here another night. And then they might raise the prices, you know. But I would have to be on the streets tonight. And then wait for the $100 deposit to come. And then maybe I could get another night 
somewhere else. Um, you know. Yeah, this is one of the more expensive hotels downtown. And I felt like really ashamed because um, what given my circumstances, you know, I, I was left with no other choice. But maybe I don't know if I should have just, you know, stayed on the streets, you know, last night. But I mean, as I said, look at my, my situation. What I, I mean... What the what the guy was doing and stuff, you know, and then what happened with the previous night with the um, with the with the officer being casual, what asking me, you know, about a woman if I saw a woman jump out into the water. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what the hell? Or oh, did you hear a woman screaming? Or oh, did you hear a woman jump? I mean, did you see a woman jump out into the water? And that perp that was harassing me with the noise did a fake video talking. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, blasting loud music with the song talking about suicidal. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the man, I mean, the guy was um, extremely disrespectful. He even called me girl. Just like the narc lady in the in the video at the La Quinta um, hotel, she even walked off and said, "Girl," and I'm like forty, about to be forty one years old. Nobody respects me as a woman. Even my twin sister disrespectfully and abusively calls me "girl" at every opportunity, rather than respecting me as a woman. But people don't call her "girl." You know, <clears throat> this phone ain't even, it's not fully charged. My backup phone is fully charged. So, none of the phones were fully charged when I left the library yesterday. So, I mean, last night, I, it felt like as if I had like, Starting to be like an ear infection or mucus in my ear or something. Or coming from... I don't even know if that's possible, mucus in your ear. But I had painful pressure on my ear. I think a couple of nights or a few nights ago, it felt like a fly or something flew inside of my ear. And then it seemed like a, another um, reinfection all over again. And I had like... When that guy was blasting music the night before last, I felt a lot of a, a big headache and a lot of pressure on my head. <coughs> Excuse me, and um, you know, so that was that even the, that made the noise campaign and the, the noise harassment even more unbearable. So they made that made everything more unbearable. So even last night I felt like pain and pressure in my ear, like as if I start to get like um ear infection or something. And but then when I took um my shower last night, it seemed like some of the mucus was coming out and kind of clearing my ear a little and my, and my nose and throat and everything um start to clear everything a little better you know <coughs> excuse me so my leg swelling went down a little bit well no it went down almost what well, looks like almost halfway Within just a few hours, it went down some. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, I have to be on the streets tonight. <coughs> Excuse me. And then wait for the deposit to come. And then... um. 
you know, try to stay in a cheaper hotel. Well, you know, they raised the, on, on for Friday, but they raised the prices on hotels on week Friday night and Saturday night. <coughs> Excuse me. And so it's um they said tomorrow June 14th that the um that the the um you know, June 14th they said that the the libraries will be closed tomorrow in honor of Juneteenth. So no libraries for me to go to tomorrow. But I don't know if it will be tomorrow morning or Saturday. I don't know if it will be tomorrow morning or Saturday. Um that I will get that deposit back. The one hundred dollar deposit. If it'll be tomorrow or Saturday, if I if I get the deposit back, but <clears throat> excuse me, I'm good on food for today, at least, you know. But I would hate to be terrorized on the streets. Um, I would hate to have to be terrorized and and harassed and abused on the streets. And like as I said, I don't have nowhere else to go. I don't know where else to go. So I gotta get off here. And um, oh, my legs hurt. I still feel like I need more sleep, but I can't because I have to prepare to get out of here. This is, as I said, this is one of the more expensive hotels, one of the nice one, really nice ones. But you know, I got like. It was like lower price, you know, last night. Maybe because it was Wednesday. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, but I was disappointed that they said breakfast and stuff like that was not free at all. But I'm like, well, okay, so I, I didn't have breakfast this morning, you know. But um. But, like, it felt, I mean, but they had certain hotels of, like, I mean, I've had moments where I've stayed in, um, like, La Quinta or certain other hotels and have had to pay, like, at least $100 or about that. Especially during the, um, like, certain events and holidays and stuff. But, as I said, I'd be trying to keep the cost to be below $100. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I guess I lucked up last night and got, um, you know, a really nice hotel. And it's like, I thought to myself, this hotel looks like it's so nice that, I, oh, they're making my nose itch. I'm like, <laughs> I, I thought, well, this hotel is, well, me being homeless and being in such a nice hotel, I was like, this home hotel is so nice that, I even feel like I don't deserve to be here or don't deserve to stay here. I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. Well, you know, the perps will say that about me, you know, but it, it, this seems like one of my only opportunities. You know, what was the point of me going on the West Bank? And like, I didn't even have like that much money for me to, I mean, the idea of, me going to the West Bank, taking an Uber and paying probably $30, $40. And then paying the $88 plus tax, like almost $100 for a hotel room. And then on top of that $250 deposit, like I didn't have all that, you know. So I couldn't do that. I didn't have the funds, so I couldn't do it anyway. So, I mean... Even if, if I were to pay an Uber to go to Metairie or Kenner, spending about between $20 and $40 for an Uber, and then paying $100 for a hotel, um, might as well stay down here. So I found me a hotel. I mean, the hotel was $101 plus tax $118 or something. 
and then the hundred dollar deposit was two eighteen, and I'm supposed to get that back. I mean, the one hundred dollar deposit. So I have to wait a couple of days. I don't know if I'll get it back tomorrow or Friday. I mean, tomorrow or Saturday. But if that's the case, I will have to be on the streets tomorrow night too. And then I heard Sunday. It's supposed to have bad weather and rain Sunday and all weekend. I mean, all week next week. And I heard that Florida has life-threatening bad weather that they said was worse than Hurricane Ian. And that Florida, like Ron DeSantis claimed um, a state of emergency for the state of Florida. And so Sunday through all next week, where am I supposed to go? So where am I supposed to go? Um... But, wow, that would have been great to have, like, $400 of help with, like, one week in a motel or hotel, but the perps ruined that. Or one motel or extended stay hotel, but the perps ruined, in person and online perps ruined that, too. So, it's harder and harder. But, like, when I came up in here late last night, it seemed like everything about this room was flawless. You know, everything just extremely clean, perfect, nice. You know, I was like, wow. You know. So... Excuse me, I had to do what I had to freaking do. But as I said, I don't be trying to seek to stay in nice hotels or whatever. They said that this was like a four-star hotel. But like the La Quintas and the other hotels be like two-star, you know. But I don't, I usually can't afford it and I don't seek to stay in more expensive hotels. I try to get the cheapest that I can afford. You know, I don't have a way to get to Slidell, and they have cheaper hotels there. But, um, you know, I cannot go out in the east because of the, um, like, especially on Chef Ventura Highway, I was advised to stay away from there the same way I was advised to stay away from the French, well, not the French quarters, but, well, yeah, some people say stay away from the French quarter, but mainly Bourbon Street, to stay away from Bourbon Street, you know. So I don't touch Bur Bourbon Street. I don't touch or go, I don't go on Bourbon Street at all, you know. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but the online perps, they were twist my words and falsely accuse me of being ungrateful and complaining. They falsely accuse me of being ungrateful and complaining and stuff like that. You know, and it's like, if I am, it ain't y'all business, but how am I ungrateful for saying that, um, talking about how nice this hotel room is. But then they will lie on me and say, say that I said that, oh, well, Candy wants more hotel rooms and she said it's that she didn't get enough money for hotels no that's not what i'm trying to say what i'm trying to say is you know um the funds that i have now is not enough funds to stay here another night so i have to find hopefully find something cheaper you know and i have i don't have an issue with that Excuse me, but I don't seek, I mean, as I said, I don't seek to try to stay in four and five and star and nice hotels or whatever. You know, I try to find the cheapest that I, that's available or cheapest that I can get. But, you know, the Ramada Inn on Chef Mentora Highway was like under $50 or something cheaper. 
but I stayed there one time and I heard that there was some dangerous things going on over there. And they have they charged like I think it was a one hundred dollar deposit. It's despite the being cheaper hotel. But um that's one of the hotels where I'm wrongfully banned from and can't go back. I only went there one time, but um yeah the the worker said the front desk agent said, Oh, it must have been an she I mean she would tell you that she didn't have an issue with me. But she said that um due to due to the um you know something that must have happened at other hotels. That's why I'm on the DNR list or whatever. But they had certain, like, I mean, certain um, Wyndham hotels that said that I was on the, on the do not return or do not rent list. And others said that I wasn't on the do not rent list. But I, I heard that they said it varies from hotels to hotels because of being independently owned and operated. But I am deeply hurt. I'm hurt. That they did that to me. And thought the shit was funny. And they doing this to me from online. From the internet. But you can tell the fake Darnell Williams perp. He ain't from New Orleans. Because if you were. How do you call the area. I never heard anybody call the area by the river walk. He tried to talk about the boardwalk. He called it the boardwalk. And he was bullying and harassing me, talking about that I'm gonna send cops to I'm I'm gonna have you banned from you know from that area or whatever. And he's thinking this shit is funny, and then he's like, switch sides now, switch sides now. And then he harassed and lying and said Candy's a perp. I I mean that's freaking what he's doing is trying to boss and control me like an adult with authority over me. But he's younger than me, very immature. And, um, you know, they need to be prosecuted for ruin, un, wrongfully ruining an innocent person's life. I wasn't supposed to have to go to jail. But even that perp that was harassing me with the loud music the night before last, for him to be 43 but look 63, but then um, he, he acted like very immature. So I'm gonna get off here and um uh, I, I mean I showed y'all also where the fake Darnell Williams per admitted that they're forcing me to be homeless out on the streets. I cannot get a job or a permanent housing due to this gang stalking. And people are rushing me to get a place to live. And stuff, you know. But, or oh, they're rushing me to get a job. Now, they had this fake T.I. perp. She showed footage of herself being gang stalked. But then she made a perp comment. And she said something about living in Sweden and getting a, um, you know, getting a um, caregiver job in Sweden and saying that those jobs are easy to get. Well, just because it's easy for you to get. It may not be easy here, but um, I couldn't do a caregiver job because they they first of all they wouldn't hire me. Second of all, with be, the false accusations of um, like the online perps one time falsely accused me of elderly abuse. For um, and and that lady Miss Brenda turned out to be a perp. And Miss Brenda caught herself trying to get gangster and ghetto on me too. <clears throat> Excuse me.
So, and, and she was hanging with Mr. John, who was also a perp. And that other lady, uh, can't remember her name, was a perp as well. Um, and they had one man that was that did not act like a perp. That with the temp service job, and um, so oh yeah, earlier this week I reached out to at least four or five temp service jobs. N none of them have responded back to me. So I'm gonna get off here. Um, but as I said, thankfully I'm good for today. But for ne b before Sunday though, I need to raise as much funds as possible to get off the streets because I heard that there's um two hurricane threats two hurricane threats and um you know and of course I ain't trying to stay in no expensive fancy hotels or whatever I'm just trying to basically just trying to survive just trying to survive you know even if it's a cheap motel you know somewhere but it's hard to even find motels around here. Um, so, but I'm going to get off here. And, oh, wow. Um, so, thanks for listening to me. I love y'all. And before I go, though, um, yesterday, I did not realize that um, one of the videos that I did yesterday evening. Um the video was thirty minutes and thirty three seconds. Well YouTube adds an extra second. So it was I guess thirty minutes and thirty two seconds actually. But I didn't even realize or pay much attention. So I'm just letting y'all know that it was not intentional that the video was that long. But let me go for now. Thanks. I love y'all. I'll see y'all later. Bye.